Hey there everybody, welcome back to more Dead Space 2. If you recall, last time we found ourselves mysteriously in the Unitology Church, actually in the gift shop more specifically, where you can buy any number of Unitology-based books, or, you know, miraculous, uh, yeah, baubles, if you will. But, you know, what good religion out there doesn't have its mysterious artifacts for rubes to purchase. But what we really want to do in here is just to make a few quick upgrades, sell off some capacitors we had, and actually uh, we're kind of running a bit low on medicinal gel, so might as well pick up a few more. And now we can start looking through some rather nice architecture and lithographs on the wall. Also, I really didn't know it the first time I played through, but you can actually listen to these signs for some helpful information. Welcome to the Church of Unitology gift shop. Find that special souvenir for that special someone to let them know you stood in the shrine of Altman today. Marker pendants made from the fragments of Titan itself are now available. Altman be praised. lies the reading room, a place where believers are encouraged to relax and meditate on the teachings of the church. The shelves are lined with select inspirational materials as well as a variety of meditation aids. Please respect the sanctity of this space and those using it by remaining quiet and reverent while inside. And that is definitely something you'll notice as we continue through the beginning parts of the church, is that it's actually fairly quiet, much like the uh, apartment complex that we just went through. But it gives off more of a feel of a mausoleum rather than some reverent place. But with this text log here, we just, uh, we learn a little bit about what they try to pose as symbolism for the marker in the church, an intertwining of, you know, body and mind and voice, when actually the marker has more been akin to be symbolic of the double helix for DNA as it uh, kind of mangles what, uh, well, it kind of forces an evolutionary process. Let's say hello to a new version of the Slasher. A little bit stronger, but not too difficult to deal with. You may, uh, may notice, though, they appear to be dressed rather differently from any kind of Slasher we've seen so far, and that's because they're actually clergy members. Isaac, can you see the symbols too? It means the stars. Yes, I see the symbols. We are a threat to them. I know it. We have to work together. Work together? Who's them? Were you in Titan? Strauss. Or could be Strauss. Yeah, Strauss has yet to be uh, very helpful at all. But uh, I assume he's our blood brother or something. And it would be good to get some help from them. But yeah, the clergy members that we'll be running into donned, donned in their masks of the Enigma and their ritual robes will, uh, there'll be a noticeable difference. Another text log here. Basically just saying, always make sure to stay with your tour groups, don't let them go into any places they shouldn't be that are more for the higher members or the administration. But I guess that particular necromorph got away from his tour group. But yeah, it's, either, it's actually rather interesting, uh, the fact that Waltman is actually a lot closer to Isaac than he may actually perceive. Now, Robert Altman was actually a geophysicist who found the marker down in Mexico, as we learned earlier. Oh. Welcome to the Titan Station Church of Unitology. We're glad you've come to visit our sanctuary and place of light and hope. 
Our tour guides are looking forward to showing you the best of our beliefs and what a meaningful and enlightening impact we can have in your daily life. There is, of course, no obligation of any kind with this tour. Kindly remember to stay with your tour guide at all times. Someone will be with you shortly. But Altman actually found the marker and realized that it had some very evil potential as he saw people around him going crazy and killing each other while he himself only suffered very slight hallucinations. Now what he actually tried to do was to build a second marker to kind of counterbalance the initial black marker that was found and he did actually create what was known as a red marker which did stop the crazy effects. The cathedral reported two pressure equalization cycles during services last Sunday. The first was minor and only blew some candle flames around, giving Pastor O'Brien a much needed, if unexpected, boost in his sermon. Uh, the second cycle was more harsh, resulting in a pressure snap that popped people's ears and sent several to medical. That was not needed. The problem was that Mar er, Altman still knew all about the marker, and while the Earth Cup forces weren't too happy about that, and quickly had him killed and then formed the Church of Unitology using him as a false martyr. Welcome to the Unity Hall. This magnificent library holds copies of the Church's most sacred texts and is a regular meeting place for the Unitology scholars as they debate the glorious mysteries of the Black Marker. Note the intricate details of the stained glass roof forged from the hand-filtered sand of Titan itself. And I will actually say, in comparison to Dead Space 1, who had many, many same-looking corridors and boiler room-esque, well, rooms, this is actually a very nice architectural change of pace. Not to say that it isn't filled to the brim with its own necromorphs. Just trying to save a little bit of ammunition here while they try to get up and I can smack them around. But it does indeed have some very nice variants from what we saw in the first Dead Space. Not li uh, nice use of color. And I understand the first game was based on a mining ship. So it's nice we can have these variant environments. But yeah, this room, with its many available air vents for slashers and infestors to get into, can actually be a lot more dangerous than what we've run into before, mostly due to poor line of sight and just rather cramped environment on the whole. Normally, I try to get as many enemies uh, spawned as I can and try to run up the stairs, but being as I'm on survivalist right now, I try to be a little bit more economical and aggressive. It seems to work out okay. But with these last little pickups obtained, it's time to ride this elevator up and continue making our way to hopefully some locked rooms in the church. Welcome to a 
indoctrination. A church seminar is currently in progress. Please wait for the next available church associate. Indoctrination is a pleasant, joyous event where you will take the first steps into glorious oneness. That is, unitology. I can honestly say I've never heard an indoctrination process actually be a joyous event. But I'm trying to actually remember if there was a similar mechanic to this fuse in the first game. I don't think there was, but it really doesn't have that much of a point. You just go over and smash it and it'll open up a locked door. This actually brings us back where we previously were, leading into the Unity Library. It's more or less just a shortcut. But as we appear to have no other place to go, I guess it's... Uh, uh, I guess it's time to go try to get our indoctrination on. You know, that actually sounded nice until the flaming skulls and dissipation and particles. Hmm. But it looks like there were some future plans to continue expansion on the church itself. But for right now, it just leaves a rather dangerous looking piece of giant glass, and I'm. Well, we'll be using that in a second. Obviously. But we have a locked door, and well, I guess we should continue to see if there's an open indoctrination slot for us. Well, it looks like there is. Just one guy uh, indoctrinate, indoctrinating the hell out of himself. But there is actually something of, uh, I don't want to call it a puzzle, but it might be kind of hard to figure out what to do here for your first time. You may notice that this is the only indoctrination station that is currently powered up, and that's due to that fuse right there. We gotta get some items before we continue on, though. Also, just some test results from a guy that probably won't uh, finish his indoctrination process. He's a bit too... normal, and not susceptible to crazy trances. Good on him, even though he's probably dead now. Please replace the views for the observation center door in the junction panel. Vandalism in the church is not permitted. But yeah, basically if you're taking too long in here to figure out the puzzle, the game will just flat out tell you what to do. So it's pretty simple. You'll notice that the observation door over there is, well, not functioning because it doesn't have views, so Popping in the fuse should hopefully fix everything. Well, somewhat, somewhat fix everything. And well, we might have lost some items, but at least we probably saved some ammunition there. But rather easy puzzle here. We just uh, obviously have to use stasis to, well, well, we slow down the door to a different point, and then we just easily get through. And we continue to get harassed by a zombie girlfriend. But yeah, keep in mind, you can be instantly killed by that door, so you do want to be fairly careful. But 
actually a bit surprising there's no audio logs or text logs in the observation room, but there is a brand new schematic which will give us a brand new suit, which we are in dire need of right now. Hopefully we can just go through this ventilation duct and easily get back to the store. Yeah, so even though you are relatively safe in the ventilation shaft, that's not always to say that you'll be safe when you're getting out of the ventilation shaft. And even though Isaac and Nolan and Altman weren't really horribly affected by the marker, that's not to say the marker is not a danger to them. But there's not much else in this room. It's a nice little administration room for, I'm assuming, a higher member of the clergy. What it does allow access to, though, is, well, we can basically backtrack back to the store now, which I will be doing. Just have to deal with one of these uh, complex fuse puzzles. And I'll just be making a short little cut here, so we don't have to watch me backtrack all the way back to the store. Now normally I would cut out the store portion, but whenever we get a new suit it's always good to see that change. Also just go ahead and sell off some stasis. I'm not really hurting for money right now, but I am hurting for inventory space, so might as well make the room. But yeah, the suit upgrades give us more inventory slots, more armor, and also an upgrade or a weapon bonus to the pulse rifle. That's actually a new feature for suits, or some suits I, I should say, in Dead Space 2. Now we are definitely styling and profiling. But yeah, the reason that the security suit does give a bonus to the pulse rifle is because actually, considering that we're now donned in EarthGov forces uh, armor, uh, their main weaponry of choice is actually the pulse rifle. So it only makes sense that we now get a bonus to the pulse rifle, which if you think about it is actually one of the few weapons in the game that's actually meant to be a weapon in the first place. But I'm actually going to be staying quiet for most of this particular area. I really feel that the noise and sound ambiance really works in this area overall. And we'll, uh, I'll see you in a little bit.
something in the church. It, it broke the door. Hang on. I'll try to override all the gates in the area. <sighs> There's something out here, too. And say hello to another new enemy for Dead Space 2. These guys are called Stalkers. Can you guess why? Well, it's because. Uh... I don't think I can open Oh, sorry. Oh, God. Yeah, Stalkers are fairly different from other Necromorphs. They're a lot more smart at flanking and actually try to be very quiet when sneaking up on you. You can actually see them poke their heads around the side to make sure you're not actually viewing where they're coming from. As you can tell, their primary means of attack is slashing you with their arms or just charging at you at breakneck speeds to try to ram into you. The line gun, though, is very good at taking them down. And I think they're all dead. Dana, Isaac, I can't unlock the elevator. Can you do anything for me? Let me see what I can do. Okay, once you're through, you'll go through the funerary ring of the church and down into the church. It's very important you not the third. No, no, Earth Hub can't land from here. Not through here. Dana, Dana, important that I want. Oh, I'm sure that must have not been that important. But yeah, this was actually, I felt, a really great introduction set piece for showing off the Stalker. We'll be, obviously, seeing more of them later, but yeah, this particular arena was just a really great means to show off their sneaking and charging ability. And uh, we're hacking the planet again. And either way, it's just nice to see a new enemy whose uh, primary means of attack isn't just charging wildly at us. But just a few more items to pick up in here before we head out from this really, really lovely set up little arena here with its more stained glass and... Suicide victim. But it is nice. It's a nice little change of pace from what we've been seeing. Welcome to the Basilica. The hauntingly beautiful hall serves as the starting point for many of our formal ceremonies. Its architecture is rich in symbolism, and the stained glass ceilings are forged from no less than the sands of Jupiter's long lost moon Io, making them nearly priceless. Enjoy the light and the love this room offers, as many have done before you. Now, the symbolism is honestly mostly made up by the Earth Cup forces who made up the religion in the first place. But that is a rather interesting bit about the moon of Jupiter now being gone. I'm not actually sure what happened with that. Observing the funerary rituals of the church. Flash photography and holographic imaging are not permitted inside the church. Thank you for your compliance. But yeah, you can kind of see on the door, 
of the, on the door itself, you can see what looks to be the indication of almost the metamorphosis process that seem, they seem to acknowledge that occurred after you died. But it was more of the magical convergence rather than the evil metamorphosis into a necromorph that they assumed would happen. Since we have a lot of pulse rifle ammo, grenade. Yeah, the grenades are really great at taking out swarmers, but you do have to keep in mind that, well, a one grenade will pretty much take out half a clip, and oh Jesus. Yeah, you're starting to see now where swarmers will actually latch onto the body of a slasher so that you kind of have a double trouble situation. Yeah, you'll kind of get attacked by a slasher and then suddenly have some swarmers on you and you start to get slowed down and have your health slowly get whittled away. It can be a very bad situation. But quick little burst fire from the pulse rifle quickly takes out even the tiniest of hordes. And in this actually fairly gaudy looking reunion hall. We can see some little effigies and memorials that people have put up for their lost ones. Or not so much lost, but seeking the fortune of the afterlife that is, well, becoming a horrible mutated baby or having a big explosive arm. And they won't need those credits where they're going. Yeah, it's definitely nice to see some other strategy other than playing possum from a necromorph. Even though we will be seeing later that stalkers can be such a massive pain in the balls. Especially when you have to deal with stalkers and slashers and other types of enemies at the same time. But with that excessively long elevator ride up, I assume we're at the top of the tower where hopefully we should run into Dana or join the highest ranks of the Unitology Church. Who's to say? But either way, uh, since that is the end of the chapter, this is Negros saying bye and seeing it. Hoping you uh, will join me next time for whatever lies ahead. <laughs>